everybody, I'm Kimberly Turner from cookingwithkimberly.com and tonight I'm going to show you how to cook Napa Valley Balsamic Remoulade Roasted Chicken. Now I have myself a large chicken quarter here tonight and I'm going to cut it into a drumstick and into a thigh. So you're just going to take the V of your quarter and you're going to cut right down to that bone. You're going to pop it open, boom, and continue cutting through the other side. And so last go. night I made a beautiful Napa Valley balsamic remoulade and I used it with some beautiful steak fries. Boy was it ever tasty. But I do have quite a bit left. And as I was saying last night, you could use that to put on chicken or fish. So that's what we're doing tonight. I used inside of this remoulade a beautiful barrel aged balsamic vinegar from Napa Valley Vinegar Company. You can find them online at winecountrykitchens.com. They have a whole line of these balsamics that are absolutely divine. Just saying. So let me um, go back to my other show and show you how I made this remoulade. This is a high, high quality balsamic vinegar that's been aged. It's from Modena, Italy. And it is phenomenal. This is um, nice and aged and sweet to the point where it is uh, the consistency of maybe maple syrup coming out. And you're going to see that in a minute. It's sweet. It's complex, it's rich, it's fantastic, and it's gonna go beautifully tonight with some baked steak fries. Uh, so make sure you check out my recipe for that if you uh, don't know how to make steak fries. But this is what I'm serving with. Now a remoulade is a mayonnaise-based sauce, it's a French sauce, similar to tartar sauce, okay? And what I'm going to do is I'm gonna start with some fresh parsley, I'm gonna mince that up, because I just have that already ready to go. That's maybe, I don't know, two teaspoons worth? You could use chives here if you wanted to, you could use skates, you could use scallions, green onions, whatever you like, okay? Uh, whatever kind of herbs you have available fresh or you enjoy, okay? I'm going to use some mayonnaise, and I'm, I'm using store-bought mayonnaise tonight for time purposes. You guys can you make your own mayonnaise if you really want to, but uh, we're just using store-bought to show you how to do it. That's a couple tablespoons because I'm serving the steak fries. You're gonna be dipping it in there. You need a bit, at least for a couple people. You're gonna need, uh, I don't know, maybe four or five tablespoons worth. I'm gonna mix that all up nice. I'm gonna add a little bit of lemon juice to that. Nice squeeze. Give a little squeeze of lemon. Now don't add too much either because I'm still gonna be adding some of this beautiful barrel aged balsamic vinegar. I'd say maybe a teaspoon or so. Two. I'm going to season that up with some freshly ground or cracked pepper, whatever you like, maybe a teaspoon. Some salt, we're also going to have to re-season at the end for the taste test. I'm going to add a little bit of uh, dry mustard. It's going to add a nice little tartness to it and it's going to help bind everything together. Maybe a teaspoon's worth. Plus, I like the flavor of mustard with my fries, just saying. I'm going to add a dash or two of cayenne for a little bit of spice. And into that, I'm going to add about a tablespoon of this barrel-aged balsamic vinegar. Look how that comes out, just like a syrup. Mmm, boy that's good. Whoa. Okay, so I'm just going to mix this all up, evenly combine it. You want it to be nice and smooth. I might even take a little whisk to this to make sure that it's nice and smooth. I'm just going to whisk that all up, and I'm going to do a quick taste test. Oh, that's tasty. Mm -hmm. A little bit more salt, a tad bit more pepper, and I am going to add just a little bit more of this balsamic, maybe another half a tablespoon. Now, if you wanted to, you could slice up or um, finely mince some dill pickle. You could put capers in here, which would be fantastic, little tiny bits. Uh, you could even use those pickled nasturtium nodes that I've done. If you want to check out that recipe, that would be beautiful in here too. But I think to, to please everyone tonight, I'm going to leave it pretty basic. Here. Mm. That is so tasty. It's creamy, it's tangy, it's savory. It has those beautiful um, bits of parsley in that tastes so good in there. A little bit spicy. Ooh, I can feel that cracked pepper, those nice little chunks. I love that. So this is what it looks like. I'm gonna put it in a nice bowl to serve with everybody's um, meal. But that's how you do it. Mmm, that's good. All right, so here's my remoulade from last night. And thank goodness we have some left because this is gonna be a very delicious meal. 
So I'm gonna serve this tonight with some rice. I have my oven preheated to 350 degrees and I have a parchment lined baking sheet ready to go. So first things first, I'm just going to quickly season my chicken. So let's get this chicken on to the baking sheet. I have some freshly ground pepper and I'm just going to uh, put that on my chicken first, front and back, or top and bottom, whatever you wanna call it. Now I'm going to use another little bowl and I'm just gonna spoon some of this remoulade into here because I may not use all of it and I don't wanna contaminate it. So that's how we're rolling. I'm gonna use a basting brush and I'm just gonna baste that underside quickly. One hand is for the chicken, one hand is for touching everything else. Make sure you're washing your hands in between everything when you're dealing with chicken. You run the risk of, um, of uh, getting sick from salmonella, okay? All right, so the bottom's done. We're gonna flip it over and we're gonna coat the top. Very simple. Um, this is going to keep your chicken nice and moist. It's going to roast up beautifully. It's going to impart a ton of just delicious flavor. And instead of having to do a glaze, now you've got this beautiful uh, coating to begin with. It's just going to bake right into that skin. It's going to be awesome. I'm going to add another little hint of flavor to this beautiful recipe by adding some Manuka smoke. Now this is 100% natural Manuka smoke concentrate. Manuka is a type of tree and I this is an extra super duper concentrated spray. You only need a little tiny bit for this to go a long way. My beautiful friend in New Zealand, Lisa McKinnon, sent this to me. We're foodie friends and her daughter does a fantastic little cooking show too. Make sure you check her out at cookingwithtalia.com. Um, very, very cool little family. All right, so I'm just gonna spray that and just let that fall where it may. It's gonna give just a little hint of uh, delicious flavor, almost like it was barbecued. So here's right. what it looks like. Man, that smells good. I can't even tell you. Uh, I hope that you check out my review on this stuff. It is really, really tasty. Um, it's gonna also just give that little je ne sais quoi to our little remoulade mixture and give it a little different taste than we had last night, right? So this is a bone-in, skin-on chicken. It's gonna take roughly an hour to be cooked all the way through. You wanna make sure that the juices near the bone are running clear. And you want a little bit of a crispy, you know, top. So I'll see you in about 30 minutes. This chicken looks fantastic, beautiful. I'm gonna say it's probably gonna take another 30 minutes for sure. And we're gonna use a little bit more of the remoulade. We're just going to paste it just a little bit more to get a little bit more flavor out of it. Might as well use it all. All right, a little bit more on there. It's gonna leave behind the beautiful flavor and a lot of that oil is just gonna melt away. But it's going to keep your chicken flavorful, moist and juicy. And that's what we're looking for. Back into the oven it goes about another 30 minutes. These look great, they're cooked through and the tops are not crispy. So I'm going to transfer them to an oven safe pan here. And I'm just gonna finish them off in there because there's some little bits on here that are gonna burn and I don't want that flavor to bug what I've got going on with my chicken. Use a little bit of this oil. Let's come off of the chicken, a little bit of fat. And I'm going to throw this under the broiler for a couple minutes just to crisp up that skin. That's what we have going on. Beautiful. Now when I'm broiling, I leave the oven door ajar so I can see what's going on in there. You don't want it to go too far and burn. Now this is a nice dark color because of the balsamic. That's what you're looking at. And it's all kind of concentrated and, and the fat from the mayonnaise has kind of just oozed out, right? Keeping everything tasty and flavorful. But the oils come out and now you have that concentrated flavor on top of the chicken skin. So we're just going to kind of brown that up, crisp it up a little bit, maybe three minutes. I'm gonna watch it the whole time. All right, let's finish this off. So that's what they look like. They are beautifully, they're nice and crisp now and they're cooked through lovely. Okay, so I'm gonna try a little piece for you. So tonight I'm serving this alongside some rice and some beautiful Brussels sprouts with lavender butter which are awesome too. Um, this is going to be a lovely, lovely addition to this meal. It is cooked all the way through. It is very tender, just fell off the bone. The skin is nice and crispy. Oh man. Mmm. And full of flavor. Mmm. 
Mmm. Mm -hmm. Now I know you think that skin might be burnt, but it's not. It is full of flavor with that balsamic vinegar, which is so dark in color. It's nice and crispy, full of flavor. My goodness, my mouth is just watering. I can't wait to finish this off. The chicken is completely cooked through. It is tender, it's moist, it's falling apart. It is so flavorful. So that's how you do it, folks. That's how you cook Napa Valley Balsamic Remoulade Roasted Chicken. You're gonna love this recipe. Check them out online at winecountrykitchens.com for this and the whole line of these balsamic vinegars. You'll be so happy that you did, especially if you buy a couple of them. Beautiful, beautiful stuff. Really versatile, not just for savory dishes, not just for salad, beautiful with desserts. I've even baked with this stuff. So it is really flavorful. It is just your all around delicious vinegar. This one is the barrel aged vinegar from Wine Country Kitchens. So it's, it's the most versatile in my opinion because it's more neutral in flavor, not the fruits, but the fruit ones are very versatile too. Delicious, absolutely outstanding. I can't wait to serve this up for everybody. Everyone's look, peeking in, seeing what's going on. So that's it folks, that's how you do it. I hope that you try this recipe, you're gonna love it, okay? Follow me on Twitter at Cooking with Kim E with a capital E. Like the fan page at Facebook.com slash Cooking with Kimberly. My shows are on iFood.tv slash Cooking with Kimberly, YouTube.com slash Cooking with Kimberly, and you can find me syndicated on Roku. Come to my website at CookingWithKimberly.com and subscribe. Interact with us and let us know what's going down in your culinary world. All right? Be a champion in your kitchen and eat deliciously. Bye.